Hello everybody, this is Mr. Mushabadi and welcome to another Solving Math 1110 video with DIY. Today we're going to be looking at complex numbers and I can tell you there's nothing complicated about these numbers. So without wasting much of your time, let's get right to it. Hey, so first things first, we need to understand what exactly complex numbers are. So I've, I've, I've just put down a few things that are just going to help us, uh, you know, uh, just deeply understand them and also make it easier for us to find solutions to them when we are faced with uh, uh, complex number questions in exams or tests. So we can start by looking at this. Okay, so we know that it is impossible to find a solution for a quadratic function such as x squared is equal to negative 1. Um, for those of you that are wondering how we got to this point, this right here is the original quadratic function. So in order for us to find the value of x, we need to make x squared uh, the subject of the formula by taking 1 to, to the other side making it negative 1. Hence this stage that we are on right now. So in order for us to find the value of uh, x, we square both sides. So we're going to have x and on the left hand side and on the right hand side, we're going to have plus or minus the square root of negative one. But in reality, we know that um, this does not exist. Like the square root of, there's no square root of a negative number. So which makes this solution right here wrong. But a solution does exist in a new number system called the complex number system. And in order for us to know what exactly this complex number system is, we need to understand what an imaginary unit number is, or rather a unit imaginary number. Okay, so we can go to the next page to understand that. So literally a unit imaginary number is just the letter i okay so a unit imaginary number is just the letter i because back in the 18th century they realized that there were no solutions to such quadratic functions or equations so they had to come up with uh, an imaginary number system which is called the complex number system okay so in order for us to just get a deeper understanding of this we need to know what a unit imaginary number is and a unit imaginary number is i this is what they came up with in the 18th century mathematicians okay so i is a unit imaginary number that is equal to the square root of negative one so i is equal to the square root of negative one so but if i is equal to the square root of negative one what is i squared so i squared is just the same as saying i times i and we know that i is equal to the square root of negative one which is just the same as saying the square root of negative one times the square root of negative one to simplify this we can just say uh, the square root of negative 1 to the power 2. Okay, so in this case, the power here is going to cancel out with the square root, leaving us with negative 1. So which means that i squared is equals to negative 1 and i alone is equals to uh, the square root of negative 1. Okay, so knowing this, we know we can we, not, we can now find a solution for x squared is equals to negative 1. So to find a solution, we can go to the next page here. So here we have our previous equation. And um, at this stage, we couldn't find a solution, right? So we have x equals plus or minus the square root of negative 1. So since we know that i is equals to the square root of negative 1, then x is equals to plus or minus i. All we've done is just substituted the square root of negative 1 with i here. All right, so which brings our answer to plus or minus i. So this is the solution. This is the imaginary solution that uh, we're talking about in the complex, in the new number system, which is called the complex number system. And this right here is called the imaginary root. Okay, so this quadratic function has no real roots, but it has an imaginary root um, right here. So this is the imaginary root. So for those of you that are wondering what an Im what uh, what real roots are, we're going to look at them later on when we start looking at um, functions, quadratic functions, polynomials, all that. So we're going to look at that later. So for now, just know that this plus or minus i is the imaginary root, okay? So since the equation x squared is equal to negative one has no real roots, it has an imaginary root which is x is equals to plus or minus i, which is what I'm just from explaining right now. So now we can look at the other powers of i, okay? So we know that um, um, i is equals to the square root of negative one. We know that i squared is equals to negative one, but how about other powers such as i to the power three, i to the power four, i to the power five, and i to the power six? 
So you're going to come across such questions during an exam test or even a quiz. So I'm just going to show you how best you can approach and actually find the right solution for such questions. Okay, so we can start with uh, i to the power three here. So we're going to say equals there i to the we're going to say i to the power two times i to the power one. But I'm just I'm not going to put the power there. So it's just one. Um. So um. The reason why we're doing this is we just want to simplify i to the power three. So we can easily go back to i to the power three using this because we know that the bases are the same so we can add the power so which is two plus one which is going to give us i to the power three okay so now but we want to find what other powers like i to the power three i to the power four are so we're going to simplify this so we know that i to the power two is negative one then we have i here so negative one times i is just going to give us negative i so that's our answer for i to the power three how about i to the power four i to the power 4, we're going to say i to the power 2 times i to the power 2, okay? So we know that this is just negative 1 times negative 1, which is going to give us 1, okay? So i to the power 4 is equal to 1. Then how about i to the power 5? For this one, you can expand it uh, depending on how you feel like. So for, for, for uh, in this case, I'm just going to say i to the power 2 times i to the power 2 times i okay so so that when we add the powers here since the bases are the same we have 2 plus 2 plus 1 we're just going to have 5 there so we're going to say negative 1 times negative 1 times i so negative 1 times negative 1 is just 1 1 times i is going to give us is going to give us i so that's positive i here then how about i to the power 6 same situation so we're just going to say i to the power 2 times i to the power 2 times i to the power 2 okay so which is just negative 1 negative 1 negative 1 throughout so negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1 so negative 1 times negative 1 that's positive 1 positive 1 times negative 1 is just going to give us negative 1 so which means our answer for i to the power 6 is negative 1 all right, so this is how you uh, you tackle such questions if you do come across them anywhere. So, but if you've noticed to what we we're doing here, if you've noticed what we we're doing here, you notice that there is a pattern here, okay? So if you look at this, so we have negative i here. So the next answer was a positive one and a positive one. After the positive one, we had a positive i. And after the positive i, we went back to a negative one. Okay, so we can see this pattern right here. We can see this pattern right here. So after the positive one, what happened is that we had a positive i. And after the positive i, we came to a negative one. And after the negative one, we came, we, we, we came to a negative i. So which is the same thing that we can notice here. So when i is to the power one, we just have i. And when i is to the power two, we have negative one which we already know. And when i is, uh, I'm just going to put this here so that you also, under, you just see what I'm talking about. And when i is to the power three, we have a negative i here, which is the negative i that we found here. When i is to the power four, we're going to have a one, which is the one that we found there. When i is to the power five, we're going to have a positive i, which is the positive i that we found here. And when i is to the power six, we're going to have a negative one. And when i is to the power 7, we're going to go back to a negative i. And when i, I is to the power 8, we're going to have 1, a positive 1. All right. So this continues. It just continues. It's a cycle. So, okay. So for here, we just have to the power 1, to the power 2, to the power 3, to the power 4, to the power 5, to the power 6, to the power 7, and to the power eight. So we can see this cycle just keeps going on and on and on and on and on. And so this is how you can tackle such questions. And to just give you a deeper understanding, you can just look at the pattern here so that you know that, okay, each time I have, let's say a negative one, what's going to come next is going to be a negative i. And after the negative i is going to come a positive one. And after the positive one, what's next is going to be a positive i. So this cycle co continues and it goes on just like that. So this is just going to help you. And I hope you've understood from this, you've understood each and everything that we've done in this session. So for the next session, we're going to be looking at 
um, imaginary numbers. So what exactly imaginary numbers? We know what a unit imaginary number is, but uh, now we want to know what exactly an imaginary number. There's a unit imaginary number and an imaginary number. So we're going to look, uh, look at that in the next video. Thank you.